So what I've done is you should have your sock creature. But what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've labeled the different fabrics that I'm using. Um, let me see if I can zoom in. Okay. So if you look a little closer, um, I've identified, I definitely need three black buttons, two for his eyes, one for his nose. Um, I'm going to make a muzzle right here based on my drawing. Um, I'm going to have to have antlers, which I've decided to make out of orange felt. Um, I want his hooves on the ends of his um, legs to be black. I've labeled that. I want, I'm going to go ahead and use a UT sock, which I actually have. Um, now, don't necessarily plan on having it. Um, when you start out with your drawing, just go ahead and have a general idea and then when you come across your socks you can as far as color make final decisions then I've uh, decided I want to make a tie-dye shirt now I may or may not have that fabric so we'll turn uh, see how it turns out based on this based on my sock creature I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my sewing pattern okay so you draw it first so figure out where you want your head, your neck, your legs. I'm going to have Bevo standing up, so he needs two straight legs. You're going to have two socks. The first one normally looks exactly like this. It's going to be the head, the neck, the torso, and the legs. The neck right here, you don't cut that off. All you're going to do is you're going to sew that with a running stitch. Then here, the legs, you're going to cut along the cutting line and then you'll sew those closed. You'll leave a hole here and then you'll stuff it and then you'll sew it closed. Um, so you should have two, like I said, this one is for the main body. The second one is for your appendages. So you'll have, uh, for me specifically, I'm going to have two arms. Let me zoom in for you. And then I have my tail. Now I went ahead and if you have any specific ideas that you're doing write them down. For this tail, I'm going to go ahead and like cut it at the end and fray it so that will be the hair on the end of his tail. Then I have his ears, his muzzle. And then um, I'll draw it in right now. If you know that you're going to have another piece of fabric, then go ahead, draw that fabric. And draw what you're going to cut out of it on there. You need to have a clear and concise plan before you even start cutting everything. Just go ahead and lay it out all on a sheet of paper. That way you know exactly what you're doing. If you do not do that, what's going to end up happening is when you're cutting, you're going to end up running out of room, um, forgetting pieces. A common mistake that I see when uh, students make the pattern is they'll start and they'll decide that they're going to cut out eyes. And this is just an example. So here they have their appendage sock. And then they'll draw out the eyes. And this is the white part of the eye. And then they'll go ahead and they'll draw the people in there. Okay, problem. Think about it for a second. What would the problem be? If I really cut this out, I'm going to cut this out so I'll have a piece like that. Then if I cut this out of that, I'm going to have it be completely empty. Okay? So all I'm going to end up is with a white piece of fabric with a hole in it. Okay? I'm not actually going to have a pupil because depending on your sock color, and most of the times it's white, you're not going to have a black pupil. Okay? So you need to get a different piece of fabric or a button to fill that in with. All right, now that you have your pattern, okay, what you're going to do, the first step, once you're ready to start working, you should have two socks, okay, so I have my two socks, have some needles, make sure that you have more than one needle, needles are very easy to lose, um, and typically they do get lost, but a handy little thing to have if you only have one, go ahead and have a magnet with you. That way you can sweep it around your area and find the needle because magnet.
we'll distract metal. Then you definitely need to have some thread. Um, this is a bobbin. You can also call it a spool or a spindle. It's fine. Um, use a color that you choose. I'm using a black on white so that you can see it better. Um, most of the time when you're sewing, you'll pick, if you're using white fabric, you'll use white. If you're using orange fabric, you can use orange. Or, if you want to be creative, you can have a complementary color, such as orange socks and a uh, blue thread. Once you have all your materials, you can set those aside. You're ready to start drawing your pattern onto your socks. The first step in doing that is turning your socks inside out. So take your socks, turn them inside out. So you want this rough side, this yucky side, you want it on the outside. Okay? Do the same with the other sock. Okay. Now that you have both out, now what you're going to do is you're going to have one be completely flat like this. Okay, so I've fixed it to where it's flat. Okay, and I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see. So if I turn it over, you can see this is the heel right here. Okay, this is what's going to end up being the butt of your uh, sock creature. It can also be a tummy if you don't want it and I do have students who don't, um, you can actually straighten it out, okay, like that. Later on, you'll cut it off and then just stitch it closed, just like that, just a straight um, stitch across. Another thing you can do, say you're working on a penguin, um, is you could actually sew it a straight line, a horizontal line, all the way across, and then that can be your little tail. If you want your tail more pointed, all you have to do is snip here, snip here to where it's actually more pointed, sew it, okay, so you'll have a straight line right here, right across horizontally, and then making a V-shape, you'll sew that to where you actually make a tail. Okay, so going back to step one. So I've gone ahead and I have my first sock. This is my body sock. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. My second sock, I'm going to lay it out to where it's the profile view. Okay, this is going to be my appendages. Now, if for real sewing, if you're actually becoming a seamstress, you'll want to use chalk. They have fabric chalk. However, um, I find it easier to go ahead and use Sharpie. Um, or you can just use a colored marker if you're using white. You can really use a colored marker. I just prefer Sharpie just because it's nice, it's clean, and I know it's not going to run anywhere. Whereas Crayola, it's washable, which is great, so if you make mistakes, it'll come out. But it's just, it gets runny, things happen, so I'd rather just stick with Sharpie. Now, if you're working with a black sock, black Sharpie or other colors of marker are not going to show up on a black sock. So use a silver sharpie okay you can do that there's also white fabric paint if you want to do that um, again the non-expensive form is just to use white chalk all right so now that I've done that I've laid it out I'm going to refer back to my sketch so go back to your original sketch your sewing pattern and I'm gonna start let me turn it this way okay so, laid it out all nice and neat. I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to make a mark where my head, my neck is going to be. I'm going to sew that later. Okay? The only main thing that I need to worry about right now is drawing a straight line for my legs. So, if this is the butt and this is the body, this will probably be the head right here. Okay? So, I'm going to make my legs about that long. Okay, notice I'm just measuring like where, how long the torso is. Taking my measurement and bringing it down. Okay, and it's about that size. Now, if you want really long legs, you can go all the way down. If you want shorter legs, cut it shorter. <clears throat> and say it's a penguin and you don't have legs, you can just cut that off completely to where this is just an extra piece. Okay. 
and go ahead and draw my line straight down. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. I'm going to go to my second pattern. I'm going to lay my sock out just like it is in the picture. Then, if I can fix the toe. There we go. This is going to be my muzzle right here. So, very nicely, I'm going to try to draw a curved shape. Also, this is like a really good place if you want a hat. You can cut right here. This is a great place for a hat. Um, this is not a bad place either. I'm going to put my arms down here. And it's this is an older sock. You can use, use socks. I am. Um, it's a lot cheaper. Socks can be very expensive. So, But if you want to spend the money, go for it. So right here, this part is stretched out. This is not, and my arms are going to be about this long anyway, so I'm going to use this nice, tighter piece of fabric. When I cut my arms, I'm going to curve um, the ends, because these are my hands. Let me zoom in for you. So... And I've curved them because I want curved hands. If you don't want curved hands, you can draw a straight line and just cut it straight. Okay, so when I'm drawing on my pattern, I mean on my actual sock, I'm just using a straight line. But when I'm drawing, uh, when I've drawn it on the piece of paper, I've shown um, that it's dotted. 